Hi everyone, I thought I'd create a little video for you to explain what the Marshall Learner Condition is, make sure that you actually really understand it, and how you'd apply it to an exam question in the summer. So, let's just do a quick recap of what we know from theme two, which is, let's say that the pound has depreciated. Well, what that would do is it would make the UK economy more internationally price competitive. Other currencies can now buy more of our currency, so we become more attractive in the global market when the pound is weak. Exports out of the UK are therefore likely to go up, why? Because other currencies like the euro, the yen, the dollar can now buy more pounds. So exports, we sell more to the world. Imports, on the other hand, are likely to go down because our pound isn't worth as much in the global market. I need to basically sell more pounds to be able to buy one euro or one dollar. So the combination of exports going up and imports going down, we would have said in theme two would result in your current account getting better. Now, we still say that in theme four. However, we basically will evaluate and say, well, actually, this depends on the Marshall Learner condition being satisfied. So let's begin by defining what this is. So I've written out for you guys, which is this. It says, the average sum of the price elasticities of exports and imports must be greater than one, which hopefully you know from theme one means it's elastic. In other words, we need our exports and our imports to be elastic for the current account to actually get better when the currency depreciates. Let's make sense of why. Up to now, we've taken a fairly kind of babyish approach. So if I break it up between exports and imports, if I said to you, let's say we own a shop and in our shop, we sell, I don't know, laptops for a living. And I go, all right, we've decided to reduce the price of the laptop. What will happen to the demand for the laptop? Obviously, you should be screaming at your screen saying, well, obviously, demand is going to go up because it's a cheaper price. Well, yeah, duh. But that in isolation, is that enough to tell you whether we made more money or less money? Well, no, because what you need to know is elasticities. For example, if I said to you, OK, we've decided to reduce the price of the laptop by 50%. And we get 1% more demand. Are we better off or are we worse off? In other words, was it a good idea to have cut the price by 50%? Well, clearly we're worse off because we've halved the price of the laptop, but demand only went up by 1%. It is highly inelastic and therefore we make a lot less money. The exact same thing is true when you think about it for exports. When your currency depreciates, that means everything that you're selling to the world is cheaper. So obviously you'll sell more. But that does not necessarily mean that you'll end up making more money on your exports compared to before. That's where elasticity comes in. So I think the easiest way to get your head around this is through a made up mathematical example. Just to be clear, they have never asked you to work this out mathematically, and I suspect that they never will. But it's a very good idea to just go through the maths because A, hopefully I'll we'll choose really easy numbers for you guys, but B, it will make it kind of like a bit more visual. So let's go through the following made up example over here. Imagine that for the UK economy, I've worked out that the PED for exports happens to be minus 0 0.7, and the PED for our imports is equal to minus 0. I don't know, let's say 0 0.5, okay? Right, question number one, is the Marshall Learning Condition satisfied? Some of you may potentially be saying yes, because you add 0 0.7 to 0 0.5, you ignore the minuses to determine elasticities, and you go, oh, I got 1.2. No, because it's the average, meaning that actually the PED, the average between exports and imports here is minus 0 0.6 or 0 0.6. In other words, the Marshall Learning Condition is not satisfied. So what I'm going to prove to you guys is when the currency depreciates, rather than the current account getting better, it's going to get worse. Right, let's make our life nice and easy. Let's assume hypothetically that what we're exporting to the world, we are exporting it at the beginning for one pound. So everything I'm selling, I'm selling it for one quid. And initially, I happen to sell or we happen to export 100 units to the world economy. What is our export revenue? How much revenue are we making from our exports? What do you guys agree? Obviously, it's just one pound times 100, so it's 100 pounds. Okay. Imports, same thing. Let's assume that what we pay for our imports is going to cost us one pound to begin with. And we are importing 100 units. So our import spend, how much we spend on importing stuff, is also equal to 100 pounds. Right, really easy. Our exports minus imports, X minus M, I've made it so that it's equal to zero to begin with. Okay, that's our starting point. And now we're going to assume that the pound is going to depreciate by 10%. We're going to make it go down by 10% in value. Okay, let's plug it in to the PED for exports first and work out what happens to exports. So let's remind ourselves the def definition of PED. So PED of exports is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded for your exports divided by the percentage change in the price. And that's equal to, in my made up example over here, I made it equal to minus 0 0.7. Cool? Right. So let's do it. When your currency depreciates by 10%, does that mean your exports are 10% more expensive or 10% cheaper? Well, do you guys agree that we said that your exports become more attractive? And the reason why is because they're 10% cheaper now. 
So you see the bottom of the fraction over there where I've got the percentage change of price. I can change that. So I can rub that out and I can make it minus 10 because our currency is depreciating by exactly 10%. That means that what we're selling to the world is 10% cheaper. Rearrange that formula for me. Well, do you guys agree that I just take over this to this side and some like, I don't know, year nine maths. We get the following. We go percentage change in quantity demanded of exports is equal to minus 0 0.7 times minus 10. Right, we hopefully remember that two minuses make a plus. So minus 0 0.7 times minus 10 is plus seven. Right, what did I just work out in words? Because we've got the numbers there, what does that actually mean? Well, what it means is we know that when the currency depreciates by 10%, the demand for British exports will go up by exactly 7%. Okay, remember that number, I'm gonna rub this out and let's now plug it in and work out what happens to our export revenue then. So if I go, all right, so let's get rid of that. Okay. Well, do you remember how before we were selling everything for one quid in the global economy? But when the currency depreciates by 10%, that means that everything we're selling is now 10% cheaper. So how much are we charging for our goods now? Well, technically speaking, we're now charging 90p, 0 0.9. And what we now know is the exports that we're going to sell to the world, we used to sell 100 units, but we worked out it's going to go up by exactly 7%. Did I see these numbers for us? So we're going to earn, or we're going to sell, sorry, 107 units. Okay, let's plug it into export revenue. So what do I do? I do 107 times by 0 0.9, which hopefully my maths is not embarrassingly bad. I believe is 96 pounds, 30 pence. But do you guys notice something? Do you guys notice that before we were selling and making 100 pounds on our export earnings? But now we're making 96 pounds, 30, even though the currency depreciated. Because the market learning condition, the export side of things is not, is not satisfied. We are worse off. We're not better off in terms of our exports. Okay, let's do the exact same thing with imports. So let's plug it in. We go percentage change in quantity demanded of imports over the percentage change in the price is equal to minus 0 0.5 over here. Yeah. Okay, but the question now is, when your currency depreciates by 10%, are your imports 10% cheaper or 10% more expensive? Well, they are 10% more expensive, hence why you're going to import less, right? So the bottom of the fraction here, the percentage change in price this time, is not minus 10, it is plus 10. Because everything I'm buying from the world is 10% more expensive than it used to be before, because my currency is weak. Okay, rearrange it again, take it to that side. What do we get? We get percentage change in quantity of market of imports is equal to minus 0 0.5 times 10, which is equal to minus 5, right? Again, what did I just work out in words? I just worked out in words that our demand for imports will go down by exactly 5%. Let's plug it in. So if we go back over here again, let's rub this out. And we go, all right. Well, before we were paying one pound for an import. So how much it cost us to import was one pound. But now, because the currency is 10% weaker, we have to now pay an extra 10% to be able to buy the same, the same things as before, right? So now it's going to cost one pound 10. So 1.1. That makes sense? And then imports, well, we worked out that they were going down by 5%. Well, we used to import 100 units. How much do we import now? We import 95 units. So our M spend is equal to, well, 1.1 times 95. Hopefully, if I've done my maths right, is 104 pounds, 50 pence. And notice something. We now spend more on our imports than we used to before. We used to spend 100 quid. We now spend £104.50 on our imports. And all of this is to say that because the Marshall Learner condition was not satisfied, the current account doesn't get better. It actually gets worse. It does the opposite of what we just said in the analysis. Now, this would have worked, by the way, had I done it as like an appreciation and then the analysis said, oh, current account is going to go worse. If Marshall Learner is not satisfied, the current account actually would have got better. Yeah. So hopefully that's really, really clear. And you understand that from now on, when you get a question in the exam about the exchange rate and the impact it has on the economy, yes, analysis continue to go down the path of saying, oh, currency depreciated. So therefore, exports will go up, imports will go down, obviously explain why. But then evaluate all the time with it depends on the Marshall learner condition being satisfied. Now, one tiny bonus on top of it, because I think that the Marshall learner condition is great as it is, is to like know it and understand it. It's very useful to combine it with one, like a diagram that goes really nicely with it. On the mark scheme, this is sometimes seen as a separate uh, evaluation. I want you guys to combine it together into like a really, really strong eval, which is to draw the J-curve. So let's make sense of the J-curve. The J-curve will look like this. So we've got the following axes. So here we are. We've got time on the x-axis. 
And then we've got the current account on the Y axis, whereby we have positive over here and negative over here, right? So in other words, where I begin in terms of which quadrant, whether I'm operating over here or down here for this curve will depend on the economy that you're dealing with. So for example, if I'm dealing with the UK, we have a deficit, so we begin negative. If I was dealing with, let's say China, it would be positive or Germany, Japan, these are countries that have a surplus. If you're not certain, by the way, they're not going to penalize you. But obviously, if the question is something like, you know, how do you correct a trade deficit? Obviously, you assume the country is going to have a deficit. So you down, down it. Yeah. Right. The beginning point is initially, let's assume nothing has happened yet. So we're just going to have this happen. In other words, nothing yet has happened. Time has passed and the current account deficit is the same as it is. The way I want you to construct this curve is to say to yourself, whatever I've said in the analysis, the opposite will happen first. In other words, in our analysis, when the currency depreciated, we would have said the current account got better. Initially, we're going to make it go down. Again, it's going to get worse, getting more negative. So it's going to go like that. And then eventually it will go up, right? Hopefully you can see why it's called the J curve. It's the J. Yeah. But that exact moment in time there was the moment the currency depreciated. So that would be like depreciation of pound. Yeah. It works as well if the currency was being devalued by the central bank. You'd write devaluation of whichever currency you're dealing with. Right. The last thing to just wrap up this video then is why. Why is it that the current account for the UK initially gets worse and then it gets better? Well, it's all to do with the marginal learning condition. Because if you remember, we said that the marginal learning condition says exports and imports need to be elastic for your current account to actually do what you said in the analysis, in this case, get better. That means that realistically, if the current account is getting worse, is the marginal learning condition satisfied? Well, the answer is no. It must mean that exports and imports are relatively inelastic. And the answer to why they are inelastic is firms are usually tied into trade contracts and therefore they cannot significantly increase how much they export or significantly decrease how much they import right if i have a contract with an italian firm and suddenly the pound gets really weak i can't call them up and be like oh guys you know like you need to buy a lot more of me and i basically will buy a lot less of you they're like oh, mamma mia no this is very bad that's my italian accent thank you very much right anyways basically no they're not going to accept that because it obviously benefits them but the currency is now weak because they can buy more of our goods or it's cheaper for them to buy our goods. Make sense? In other words, in the short run, the market learning condition is unlikely to be satisfied. But in the long run, the market learning condition, as long as it's satisfied, because trade contracts, contracts can be renegotiated, the current account then begins to improve. Hopefully that made a lot of sense and I'll produce as many videos as I can ahead of your exam this summer.